Welcome to the channel, Adventures with Motive. This week I build this, a tool cabinet with sliders, ball bearing sliders. Everything is recycled, everything. It has been built from an old fire engine that I found in the scrapyard. If you want to know how this was made from an old fire truck, you need to keep watching. Cue the intro. Welcome back fellow YouTubers. This week, this next couple of weeks, I want to build a new cabinet. The one that I've got now, I can't fit much stuff in it I'm afraid. I've got so much rubbish, I just can't get everything in. I've got a mag drill, I've got, um, I've got that bottle jag, none of it will fit in any of these drawers. By the way, I need to replace those runners. I pulled everything out because the runners and that I've got to put new runners in, they didn't work out in the end. I need another one. The old wooden workbench has been smashed up. This is what's left of the old wooden workbench. Not a lot. So we are going to make a new bench and I need to recycle everything that we possibly can. And I have found a fire engine down the scrapyard uh, with more drawers. More drawers! We're going to get them. Stay tuned. Right. A little bit more progress today on the, the cabinet. I ain't even started the cabinet yet, but as you can see, there's now no room to build a cabinet over here. What we have done instead is we've smashed up the woodwork bench, which is what that cabinet is going to be replacing. I'm going to empty all the magazines out of that unit. I'm going to take the sliders off that and then chuck that down the, the skip as well. Um, sorry, skip, uh, tip. I'm going to okay, put that so down. We're getting ready, Sunday today, and we're getting ready to make the new cabinet. I've cleared the woodworking bench, it's gone, and the filing cabinet, we've stripped all the doors, uh, drawers out, sorry, and stripped the runners out, because I'm wondering if I can use them or not. I'm not sure if they're going to be strong enough for what I've got planned, but we'll see if we can save some money somewhere, I will. And then that got me thinking, based on that one over there, I might be able to use the sides of that cabinet to build the sides up on my new cabinet. And then... Right, I saw the drawers. Five of the small ones, two of the large ones and a tray. All the hardware to make them slide. And also in the car is a piece of aluminium in the form of a, like a box that is going to fit on that tray and I'll cut the tray down and I've got some spare sliders in the yard which I'm going to add to that. All the shed is cleared in the area where I'm going to be working. I did get um, told off by the bin men this morning because I <laughs> had put stuff in there that wasn't meant to be in there but they did empty it in the end so that's where that unit is going here and what I'll do is the base plate but I did cock it up uh, I don't know, that's that damn tape measure, that's what I'm blaming. Won't retract, it's flying about everywhere. But it's it's welded. As you can see, they're not too bad. Not my best welding, but definitely not my worst. I mean, my worst that look like uh, aircraft carrier seagulls. There is the top one. With a one foot overhang. can't I mean this is going to be a little because they're a little bit longer than they needed to be but there's no back going on this so I'm not overly worried about that at this point in time so and everything else will fit in because the most critical part of this is the sides that's what controls the drawers that's what needs to go in and out dead straight Whew. Sides are now on, I had to extend one, didn't have enough. Uh, the lid is now on, welded, sides in place, about as square as I can get it. Bearing in mind, I only have one of those devices, I could really do with a second one. Um, and a flat bench like that one over there in the middle of the room would make my life easier. But hey ho, we have to make do with the small things that we have, as some of you know. So, what we done? 
We've got a one foot or 13 inches roughly overhang. That's going to be for the pillar drill and vise. I've given it a 33 inch lift but was only needing about 27 I think it was. So there will be space underneath for trolley jacks with a bit of luck. We'll put some wheels on this. This is a very comfortable height. I am quite happy with that. I don't think we need to go any higher. Um, the, uh, the wheels going on could upset that a little bit, but we will see. Right, so, uh, yeah. too cold. Now, let me explain how these work or how they worked on the fire truck. Uh, this is the front part. That's the back part. And it goes, if memory served, it was. Good morning, guys. It's a freezing cold day. Get that right. It's also a need air cut badly. Right. Oh, let's get these lights on. Oh, it's dark. Oh, it's very dark. Oh, there it is. One. And we're going to get behind here and get them on. Right. Yeah, this isn't going to work. It's um, jamming up. It doesn't slide out smoothly. It's quite horrendous. And that's as far as I can get the thing to slide out to, to be honest with you, because of that system. Yeah, we did speak about doing all that other bit. It ain't going to happen. Right. I've ordered seven sets of kitchen drawer runners for this. I think we're going to have to abandon the idea of this, which is a shame because it was a way, way lot stronger than what I'm about to put in there. I mean, the weight capabilities of these rollers is phenomenal compared to what I'm putting in, but we can't have, we can't have that, that ain't work. It's gonna be one of them jobs that's gonna, over time, wear me down and I'll end up losing my rag with it. And you can't get under there to get to the tool, so this is just not plainly gonna work. Uh, so what we're going to have to do instead, and I was going to try and keep these, but I don't think they can stay either. So we're going to strip them all off, get rid of the drawer, strip all the hardware off the drawer, like these little roller plates and everything, all got to go. And we're going to literally pop rivet a slider onto that, and we're going to have to make some new angle drop downs. And then we're going to have to do what we did on the other one and weld angles across. But this time, instead of welding to the angles, because this stuff's got plastic in it and it'll melt, uh, I'm probably going to have to rivet these on on each one, which is going to be awkward. That's okay, we're a little bit more ahead than what we were earlier. I was going to pack up and clear off for the night, but decided to continue. And I've cut four props out. That's the new width of the drawers at the moment. I've numbered them because uh, measurement issues, right? <laughs> uh, but I cannot do anything until I've got the slider runners. It's a bit those. dented because I've been sort of throwing it about because it was just classed as junk. But it's got the slits that go across that could um, match up or at least give me a bit of a blend in with the drawers. You see what I'm saying? So, if we went and cut this properly and neatly, and with my dolly set, very, very carefully knocked out the dents, we could actually use that as an overskin. That would work. So if we made an angle iron frame to go around this, we could in theory put that riveted on the angle iron as an overskin for that. So it doesn't matter how big it is inside, on the outside it will just look tidy. That could work. That could work. Right, new day. Last night, cut them out, probably already know that. Um, I'm waiting for tool stations delivery. 
I'm not holding much hope that I'll get that before 12 o'clock. I mean, we're in the 11 now and probably not going to see them till later, but hey ho. Uh, well, they're finally here. But I tell you now, you couldn't run a business like this. It's just not viable. This is what I ordered. Just random, everyday, non-shock absorbed, or whatever they call those ones. They were cheapest, they were six pound a pack. You get two in a pack. I hope this is gonna work, because this was expensive. So we've got seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. I'm gonna give you a little bit more of an insight in these. We've got a steel roller bearing unit, which is what I was hoping for, but I've got to be careful along here because there's plastic. So if I did get to the point where I had to um, weld these back plates to anything like the steel, there is a very high risk of melting that and that whole runner will be absolutely destroyed. And the other good feature about these, and I'll be honest, I didn't know, is you've got a little lever here disengages so you can actually pull the whole drawer out I'll take two people for the two top drawers but you can take the whole drawer out service replace do whatever this could come in handy that actually for when I mount these in place so I think what we'll do first is we'll put this one here we'll put that on there first turn this thing right over We'll mark where the steel is going to go, we'll weld the steel on, and then we might try and disconnect that and put that on separately, work out a position of where it's going to go, and then put it on separately uh, on both sides with a bit of luck. And then I'm hoping with a bit of help from somebody else, we can very carefully lift this back in and then push it in, and then we've got our first drawer, which will be, I hope, smoothly fitting. What I do need to do, though, if I've got these positioned correctly, and I don't know yet because I based it, the distances on an old one I had lying around here, which is down there, as long as the thickness is the same and they do look the same, they should be, shouldn't they, because they're universal. The kitchen manufacturers make to a specific um, size, spec. So with a bit of luck, we can whack these on and move on okay got the first one on i riveted i mean it's no more than what's been done on that one to be honest so far we've got one in and i i made a mistake i put the hinge point in the wrong area uh, i done two lines got confused that hinge should have gone on the upper line so as that wall there is closer to there however however we are going to use that to our advantage because on this cabinet that i made you see that jamming up toolbox these drawers are just not quite big enough in depth i thought they were but they are not okay i got one more bit of metal to cut before the night is out, but because it is so late at night, I think we'll skip that next bit. A um, bit too much of a gap under here. Not planned. But it's smooth and it works. This one's a bit stiff. I think, I think this is rubbing that metal somewhere. So we'll, uh, we'll grease that all up and see if we can improve on that somehow. Again, we might put something underneath that just to take the gap up. We don't want fingers getting under there, do we? I mean, the easiest way to empty this toolbox is to tip it. <laughs> Everything's going to fall out of the two tops. So there's no point locking them. So, uh, yeah, a little bit, of, little bit of work to do there. Okay, it's a new day and we've done a little bit more work. We've got the sliders on that little drawer. And we've managed to put a brace across the, the, the uh, below that second drawer and a solid bit of steel, which I opted to because putting a bit of angle in there was proven tricky because of the way I've set that piece of angle above it. There would probably be another one of those set aside there and then a little bit of angle or some tabs or something welded in so I can put a piece of checker plate in there. I've now decided a checker plate will go in each end if I've got enough to cut. Um, so that is pretty much it. Well, little drawers in. Ironic, really. 
on the other one I turned the whole thing end up put spaces in and dropped it in just because of the nature of the sliders these ones are so much harder to work with you can't put screws in because you've got nothing to screw to unless you use self taps um, or machine screws with thread and, and that's just five times more work you've got to drill it like that uh, stuff like that um, so yeah I've just had to literally measure off from each one so if the first one's the first draw is out of alignment a whole lot of them are going to be out of alignment and you've got to start all over again this is taking a long long time but it will be worth it so there's a small one I know what's going on with that just listen to the metal screaming and tell what's going on with that so huh, four more to go Wish me luck. Okay, so the drawer runners. I ain't really spoken about it too much, have I? Basically, I've just leveled this runner here. This is the one that comes out. You just click that up and it all slide out. And I basically just put that on with rivets there. And I've used as many of the holes as I want. But I don't want to overuse the holes. Because um, I'm worried about snagging and stuff like that. And there's just no need, really. If everything's lined up, those, that, and everything will work. The next thing to do is to cut a piece of angle iron and lay that flat and I'll show you the process of that in a minute. Don't weld this face. It is taking me about an hour and a half to do one draw. <clears throat> Fairly smooth, bit squeaky, but I don't live with that because we're going to grease it all up anyway. There you go. So we've got another three more drawers to put in at the bottom. We definitely is not going to have room for, for a, a little tray at the bottom for a jack. You just can't see it. So what might I do? I might not even be able to get that third drawer in either. Um, that's got to go in. All because I messed up that top one. Um, took quite a lot of space out that I needed. So yeah, three more drawers. You can see where those two are. By the time I get the third one in, there ain't going to be no room, is there? I'm about a quarter way down. The next one will take me halfway and there'll be another quarter left. So, if you see what I'm trying to say. Right, there's another draw. Hour and a half, hour. Actually, no, I got that one out a little bit quicker because I'm now, I'm now on a blinking roll. I know where I'm heading with it now. I know how to do it. So, we've just got two more left. It's funny, that, isn't it? You get halfway through, you struggle, and then when you get to the last few, you suddenly nail it and then you know you can continue with more a lot quicker. Problem is, there's no more of those drawers down the yard. That is it. The small ones with those handles are gone. There are some more, but without handles, and that have to fit handles. And I reckon there is room for a jack underneath, but I can't help feeling that maybe I should go all the way down to the bottom with this just to make it look neat and tidy, and I'm talking too much, so I'm off. Bye. Oh, last one. Last one to go, but we definitely don't have room for a jack under there. Well, there you go, guys. So far. I'm quite pleased with that. Although I'm now annoyed about the bottom. Oh, I've only ever got that top drawer. Those two top drawers are a little higher up. If only. Never mind. I've got two choices with that bottom. I can put a tray on, like I spoke about. Or I can go back to the yard, get one more drawer. But I will have to strip off a lock off another one. So as I can get these locks to match. Well, thinking about it. We could frame that bottom drawer off and then put a blank plate down there and lift that up to the same height, the other drawer, that one, cut it if I have to, lift it up and follow that line all the way across and checker plate the bottom, checker plate the sides and then a piece of steel along the top, down the middle and that will look amazing. Right. 23 and a half wide, height is not the issue. It's going to be the whip. Twenty-four and a half, plenty big enough. So yes, answer that question. It's all cut up, ladder. These are the runners. Came out of a fire. Ouch! Fire appliance. Ow! That hurt. A um, little bit more trimming to do. Uh, there as well because we'll be using that run that one's going to be bolting straight where are we straight to the sides of that we're not even faffing about um, I want that 
pretty much on the ground of the steel so there's no gaps underneath. We've just got to clean up, clean up that side and we'll cut two angle irons out to weld straight down. Nothing spectacular on the welds but enough to hold and uh, then we'll screw those onto that and uh, hopefully it will be working. The only thing I haven't figured out yet is whereabouts I'm going to mount it to. Now I could cut the angle iron out so it fits on the inside edge so it keeps that nice and low. No I can't because the sliders won't work. Wakey wakey. So we're going to have to put the angle iron above. Right, that drawer is in. I was going to, well I'm going to, I'm going to put that on because it matches the lines, the lines follow, but I was going to put an angle iron frame around it. But if I'm honest, I think I'm overthinking it. Ridiculously overthinking it. So what I'm going to do instead, that last bit of ply I've got, I'll put a piece of angle up top so I can fix a grab handle. I think I'm just going to rivet that wood on. And then I shall obviously cut the wood to shape carefully and then glue that onto the wood and then run some extra rivets down just to hold that into position with the aluminium. I don't think I need anything else. <clears throat> As I said, I think I'm overthinking it. The only thing that's concerning me, and I can do this with angle, is a frame around that just to protect these little edges there. So I can always make an angle iron frame around the wood because the whole thing's being sprayed up anyway. And uh, that should be sufficient. As I say, I think I was overthinking it. I was going to make an angle frame originally on that lip and then a second frame coming off that for that to go on. But I'll be using so much angle up. That'll put so much weight on it. Not that the weight is an issue. We're not going anywhere with it. But I, I just think it's too much. So, right, wood's cut. It's 900% square. I lost it somewhere. Um, I don't know if I lost it in the frame down there or I lost it on here. I don't know. I ain't got a clue. Uh, that's glued on. I'm now making the angle iron frame just so it'll just sit neater. So we get grinding them in and start cutting these all out, grinding them back and welding them up from the inside. And the bottom one will fit straight onto that. Unfortunately, the top one will not. Um, don't know how I'm going to get around that. I could reduce my size. This didn't go well either. Got all the rivets wrong. Alignment's out. That square I was talking about, that's made a big impact on this. Um, so it's jamming up a bit, but we've got a deep drawer, so we can put my bottle jack in there, mag drill and all the other bits and bobs. So, another one bites the dust. I don't have any drawers left to do now, so really all I've got left Really, all I've got left to do now is do the base plate, the kick plate at the bottom, the side plates each side, and then an extension on that top drawer. That requires a lot of noise. So now is not the time. What I can possibly do, but my chop saw is not enjoying this angle iron because I've got some broken teeth and it's not cutting very well. So I think it's going to be... I mean, isn't that, you can't beat a good grinder, can you, really? So, I think, oh, I don't know, I'll see what happens. I'm going to go indoors in a little while and over coffee and have a think about it. But I think the next job, for definite, is the worktop frame. If we get that done, then I can go out, get a piece of ply or board or whatever, and I can then lay that out. And I think what I also will do is put some cross members across as well, as extra supports through the center and we are going to be putting those two on so i will be extending it out to around about the layer and then cutting in like i spoke about earlier we've just got to put a piece of steel at the end and then a couple more bits somewhere for the vice so i've got to drag the vice out which is um there so that's got to come out and go in on the end of that table. So we are, we're, we're slowly pushing through it. 
bearing in mind I've been at it since Tuesday. I've been doing this since Tuesday. And we're now Sunday. I've been doing this a long while actually. Howdy folks, another day. And we've been a little bit busy late last night after I stopped filming. I did actually remove that drawer front and I managed to push the sliders back enough to get it to sit in square as I, as you can see now. I also took the skin off, recut the frames and then re-riveted. Unfortunately, the holes for the rivets didn't go so well. We also slapped some hammerite over the top, silver hammerite, so it all matches. Uh, next thing to do now is the top. Now I've already put the brace across here and I've cut it at an angle. This is what we're doing. We are going to make a frame so everything this side stays straight but it goes out to about 28 inches there and then slowly works its way back in to a, an even edge where that line there is and we'll cut all the angle iron to that framework and we'll put a couple of crisscrosses in for extra strength. I just haven't as yet made my mind up what direction we're going with this and what wood we're using. I know I can get my hands on a couple of old scaffold boards which is what I prefer to have up there because it'll absorb the hammering and smacking although we don't want to be doing too much of that because some of the tools that are going in here will be sensitive to that but at the same time we don't want stuff falling through do we so uh, the other problem is is the wood is soaking wet whichever I get um, we've now pretty much run out of money we're down to about a tenner and I need that for discs so I've now got to go for second hand wood from somewhere I uh, can't do the the B&Q purchase that I was going to do or the Wix purchase so that's where I'm at. We've got to cut the angle iron down uh, so that can be riveted to the top drawer and hide up the mess up there, the gap. And then we've got to take off a bar from there and hope that that will fit as well because we know the smaller angle iron will not. The gap is just too small for that. Um, and then we've got to make up some frameworks um, down the bottom there and underneath that bottom drawer. And if I do an overhang the other side, so I might push that over that corner over to the edge of the wall, see what overhang you know space is left, and I might actually extend the tabletop over to that, and then put a couple of little slip drawers in there. When I say slip drawers, I mean racks, so to speak, for two car jacks to go in at a slight angle. We'll leave the floor section open. If I get a large trolley jack, I can just wheel that straight under, and then the two lighter ones can be wheeled in and put into a little rack and then can be held there because this is not going to be here when I start um, sorting the rest of this workshop out because we've got that to pull down next and we've got that wall at the back to line uh, and then once we've done that and we've done that I'm going to just do the wall there move all the equipment over and then we'll get back to the lorry but I've also... right I've primed it I primed it in some hammerite uh, red primer which is designed to fill up all of the irritating little potholes in a rusty bit of iron I'm not keen on it but it, you know the, the the paint brand but it's a means to an end and this is coming to the end so the pegboard I wanted to build at the back ain't gonna happen in the form of it fitting on here I think what we're gonna do is we'll take all that little lot down and stick the pegboard peg board sorry in front of that window space and uh, that should be sufficient for what I need uh, braces are done for the vice and they don't line up with the vice <laughs> yeah. so uh, I just got a paint behind there paint behind the back because I haven't done that yet I haven't done all the runners inside to be honest it's not that important I just got to get it on bricks at a later date so I can paint the sides we haven't organized any kind of wheel for this because I've run out of bloody money. I've run out of money, so I guess it's not getting wheels. Um, but we may put provisions in. I should really put it on wheels because stuff falls down the back. I'm going to be moving all of this. And when that's full of tools, man, that is going to be so heavy. <sighs> wheels it will be in a couple of weeks' time. So uh, we'll see where we go with this anyway. Why do they call red oxide, red oxide paint, when it is clearly brown? Whoever come up with the concept of that must have been on some heavy duty drugs. That's all I can say. Anyway, 
morning, another day, Tuesday, and we're still at it. Need to get some green paint for that. I just want to brush that all back and put a primer on it. Just need some green paint. Um, and then that will be ready to bolt on at any point. However, that got its coat of red yesterday. It's so dark in here, you can't really comprehend what we're looking at. I've got to lift it up in the air, put bricks on it, and just paint down on the bottom, because I was so close to the concrete, I didn't want the dirt from the floor getting on it. So, we literally have got to put some paint on it, but that's going to be... In fact, today we get some dosh, so I'm probably going to get the wheels, and now that I've given away my last remaining steel that I've now realised I need for the wheels, I'm going to have to get a bit of old powder coat from the bottom of the gun. Actually, I might give them the powder coat and keep the offcuts. Um... Even though it did cost a fair bit of money. A friend in need is a friend indeed. I think that's what they say, isn't it? Something like that. No skin off my nose. I don't need it. Anyway, so what we've got left to do. Quite simple. We've now got to cut the filing cabinet. I've measured that all up. It will fit. So we've got to get that tin off the side. Ooh, that's not going to be easy. I don't know what to do it without making too much noise. That's going to be even harder. Ideally, we want to leave that lip. Ideally, I would like to utilise that. But, uh, but, 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 I've forgotten where I was going with this. Right, it's primed up. Oh, them lovely brush lines everywhere. Well, I was going to spray this, but it's going to require noise, smell, and money. And that's not necessary, because some of you will know this trick, and some of you won't have a clue. But for those who don't, a lot of people say get the paint on the roller and roll it. But I don't tend to do that. I have found better results on some things, depending on what you're doing. Like if you're doing a van side or a boat or something like that. I tend to brush it on first, very evenly, and then roll after to get the brush lines out and to evenly spread. This is fairly self-leveling, this paint. As you go back, just gently ease off the roller. Unfortunately, my roller's been stored wrong, so it's a little bumpy. And it'll give you that orange peel texture that you hear paint sprayers say is very bad when you're paint spraying, which they're right. It's, you know, if you're doing a, a car, you don't want orange peel all over it, if you can help it. Rolled. Uh, I'm quite happy with that. Both of them have been done. I've got most of the runs and lines out from where you where the paintbrush has been I haven't done <coughs> excuse me haven't done the edges because I'm gonna rivet them on and I want to hide the rivets so after I've riveted them on I'll then go over with some red um, just to hide everything really so this is the old filing cabinet that we spoke about it's no longer it's all on the scrap pile apart from these few sheets that you can see here and we don't need nothing special for the job we just need to cap the sides off make it neat i mean that one you're not even going to see so i put the dented side that side and a reasonably decent side which is still dented actually on that side uh right. end of day whatever number we're at i can't remember check that finish out Beautiful in it, proper old school, love it. Right, well that's the vice covered. Can't touch that now for at least two days because it's a, a real thick coat on there and uh, I know it ain't gonna dry off very quickly in this weather. So we've put some red stripes across there, which is something I always intended to do. It's down the yard today and I forgot to look for another handle. We've painted these, but they've come out patchy because old numb nuts here forgot to uh, clean the brush properly, so I had primer on it. It was a darker colour, so it's come out patchy. I did roll it, but I put it on so thick 
that that's going to take a very long while to dry. Uh, can I live with it? Yeah, I suppose I can. We've got to buy another tin of red anyway. Um, so we'll see if we can roll one more on that one. And uh, I'll get the wheels tomorrow and we'll make up the wheel brackets. Get this thing. I have never put so much care and attention into something like this in my life. It's another day. I've been busy this morning. We've put angle iron on that drawer. Another bit under that other drawer below. We've as yet to paint them red. We've cut some checker plate out and destroyed about three discs doing it. We all know alien discs don't really mix, but I can't get my saws out. Otherwise, I'd have done it on the saws. So, they're all in place. That one over there is in place. We have the wheels. Tool station actually had something in stock. I'm stunned. So, we've got two of these with brakes. 125mm wheels. Uh, weight capacity, I've completely forgotten, but... They're heavy enough, heavy duty enough, definitely. So, this is what I did with the angle iron, you see, because you your fingers under there, I didn't want to do that. Um, did the same on the other one, copped up one of the holes though, but hey ho. So, that needs wire brushing back and a quick coat of red on that. The sides are painted, but one of them needs to be redone because it didn't come out very good. And I can't really put them on just yet anyway because we've got the wheels to do now. And once we've got the wheels done, we'll cut the wood to shape. Lay that on. Um, and then we've got to address those windows behind because I need to take that piece of wood off. And I need to put that in place instead. But I want to board those bottom windows up first before I start messing around. And then once I've done all of that, we'll hoover out the drawers and then we'll start filling them with tools. And I've got to varnish the wood first, but the wood is still very wet. Um, That's me. My glasses are steamed up or it's dusty in here. But we just wire brushed back some more metal. Now, please keep an open mind about this. I needed wheels. And um, before I show you what I've done, and I think they look a bit, well, possibly daft, possibly look daft, possibly not. It depends on the, oh, for God's sake, get the words out. Depends, slow down. <sighs> Depends on your perspective. My mates came around today and said, why do you need it on wheels? It's solid as it is. Right, I need it on wheels because if something large comes through that door, I need to be able to move that out of the way. Also, if I want this bench, because I like having a bench out in the summer, outside, I can wheel it outside, sort of. I should have got another set of those brake wheels really but there you go um so that's the reason why it's on wheels and if i drop something behind i can easily access the back without having a faff about and here we are so there are the wheels now we've got a primer them all up and they are proper heavy duty Fully lockable, well, the, the side, the rear ones are lockable. So these ones stay in a straight line, and these are the ones that swivel around. So it's a little bit like, a, I don't know, an industrial shopping trolley that you get from a DIY store that's really a pain in the butt to steer, but it's the only way I could do it. Um, and I could not put those close to the edge. I was going to, and then discovered I couldn't. So uh, yeah, this is, as about as good as <laughs> there goes the words again. It is as about as good as it's going to get. I am afraid. So now what I'm going to do? I'm going to primer them up. Mask off here. Primer that steel up. The same with that piece. As you can see, there's a, there's angle. We've got that in. We've now done the checker plate. This is just in case I haven't already shown you that. And we've got the other piece in there piece in the bottom the only thing left to do two jobs three jobs is to get some paint on it get the wood cut laid planed varnished and then i've got some um two pieces of angle left which are going to lip over the top at front and back and hold it on um and probably put it on with sealant as well so it'll absorb some of the vibrations that's the plan and uh, varnish that all up really and it's a ready to go working cabinet i love it 
it's nice and red which represents um, the fire service so it's a little bit of a tribute to those guys they do they do good work they, they work their butts off and so this is my tribute to you as everything came out of a fire truck in the first place so let's price this up shall we you can add this up I'm not going to add it up I'm just going to tell you what stuff or what I've used and what I haven't now the steel box is scrap that came scrap yeah that was 50 quid the angle iron, we'll call that 25 quid because it was 50 and I've used it all now on both cabinets. So we'll say 25 quid for the, the angle, second hand angle, rusty as hell. The drawers, all the drawers, including that drawer, was 100. That's all the second hand stuff. The feet brackets were scrap lying around, I recycled them off the lorry. And the wheels, I can't remember the price of the wheels. I think the back wheels were four quid each and they were 16 pounds each, something like that. We've then got the scaffold boards. That one's a tricky one to price because I've got a job lot price of 40 quid. If we say 25 pound for the scaffold boards that are going on, sit there, work that all out and then come back in the comments and tell me how much that is. And then tell me how much it would cost to buy one of these. My mate was saying to me that his mate bought a cabinet don't get me wrong it had a roller lined at the top and it went all the way up and it was all snap on four grand and that was second hand not brand new four grand what the hell is wrong with people four grand can't get me head around that i ain't got four grand if i had four grand hell i'd go on holiday with it i wouldn't buy a toolbox sod that for a game of soldiers or I'd buy myself a new bleeding shed four grand Anyway, I'm going to prime up now and then I'm going to go in and have my tea. Hopefully later on tonight this will be dry enough to get the red on. We'll get the rest of the red sorted out and then tomorrow morning we'll come out and we'll start cutting all the wood to fit on top. So I'll just do one more clip later on today uh, with all the red paint done. And uh, I think at that point we're going to call it um, until the following day we'll get the wood done. I can't. Oh, we ain't done that bit yet. Oh, we're not done yet. Here we go, primed. Now we just got to go over the whole thing again with some more red, and that paintwork will be finito. There you go. All the red paint is now on. Primer is dried enough. Red is now in position. What have we got left to do? Well, it's too late tonight now to do any more. A bit tired as well, to be honest with you. We'll cut the wood tomorrow. Um, we'll put the tin sides on, we'll repaint one of the tin sides and no doubt I'm going to scratch the paint. I will touch that back up again and uh, then the wood will come off, go in the house for a couple of days to dry off and no more work will happen and then we'll come back out, we'll seal that wood down, glue it all up, seal it down, lock it in place and then cut two pieces of angle to trap it down so it can't move, rivet that into position and uh, bolt the vise on and then it's finished done can't do any more to it oh this is such a dark shed we need to get these lights replaced desperately right we've got another another day's work to do put this in the house to dry out because i was going to repaint it because i wanted to put it back on that side <laughs> wrong side it goes on that one wasn't planning on repainting it so waste of time not a problem we are um, going to shape it remembering that i have now added wheels so i've got to work around both corners now we've got that one down there which you can't probably see and we've got that one so i've now got to cut sections out on the bottom and then we'll pull it out completely and put that first one in which is going to rivet it down uh, the second one, well, I'm going to grab that in a minute, dry it off, and I'm going to put that in the house near the radiator because uh, I want to put some paint on that because that's the side you're going to see a lot of. What I had the exact amount of wood to fit. There was no spare. Unfortunately, the last bit, bit blooming rotten, but we're putting toolbox over there, so I ain't, well, I ain't too bothered about it really. Um, I planed it as best as I can get it, I sanded it with a belt sander to the point where the belt sander is about to blow. Uh, DA'd it, battery's dying on that. Can't get it any better than that without putting some serious time into it. 
and to be honest it's a workbench so it's not going to last long all of this is eventually going to smash off as I'm using it um, I might try and get hold of a checker plate checker plate or something to go across there because the little bit of check that I had I'm going to put on the end because I need something to the vice to properly clamp down on um, going to be a lot of oil spillage and stuff like that and I think that's probably the best place for that so we're going to do that and uh, the middle section will get something large put around it somewhere along the line so the next thing to do is to cut two pieces of angle clean them all up and then with some six mil bolts we'll bolt them on which will clamp that wood down tight once we've got that done we'll paint and varnish and i'm going to all i'm going to do is put the checker on and i'm going to rest the vise on in the position that's going to be bolted on once i've done that you lot get the video Right, that's the two trims bolted on. We've used coach bolts on the back and we've used just normal random bolts with a tap and it's on. <clears throat> it ain't going anywhere. So next is to open that big door up, get the airline out and blast the shed with dust because it's everywhere. We've put the first coat of varnish on. We've got cracks everywhere, which I knew we were going to have. Um... I was going to put filler on it, and then I changed my mind, and now I've changed my mind again. Possibly. I don't know yet. Some of these are pretty deep, and we don't want rubbish going in there if I'm doing something tidy. However, we can put down rubber mats, which I might do anyway for some stuff. Um, I mean, you don't normally do what I've done with a workbench, to be fair, but I... I can make a real mess of a bench oil everywhere and that oil will get in there and then you want to do something clean like carpentry you've ruined your bench hi right, guys friday varnish is still extremely wet so i'm calling the video i'm going to upload it now i've temporarily fitted my board at the back but we've got to play around with it a bit i want it a little higher up i want it around the plug i've got another socket to put in for obvious reasons um, I've just laid the vise where it's going to be bolted which is here and I think that will work brilliantly we've still got room on that corner to get a door fitted so I'm going to look into getting my double glazed door in there and at some point we've got to pull all this down so what you see is what you get with this I'm afraid all the drawers are working just need to give it a good hoovering out as you can see that one's working that one's a bit stiff that one's working that one's not as stiff as it was so it's working its way I've got to grease all the runners up to be honest with you all right and my biggest headache drawer which i can't get open at the moment this i can oh come on i need a handle I'm almost there with it. There we go. And we've got this deep drawer, so I'm going to put some of the bigger stuff in here. But I've got to make up the false floor because the alley is pushed down from all the weight that was being used on the fire engine. So there you have it. One finished workbench. And I will give you a good view from here there you go I am so chuffed with this so what have we got in components okay I suppose we better list it second hand vice wire brushed up painted the tin not the greatest quality of paint on it, but filing cabinet is where that come from. The steel has all come from the scrapyard at various time scales. The wheels came from Tool Station. They actually had them in stock. Her her. The backboard, that came out of a fire engine. The drawers, they are utility drawers out of a fire engine. That drawer there is uh, 
it was actually bolted into a utility drawer something large slotted in and I saw that as being a really good handy um, drawer and the sliders underneath they are the generator sliders from a fire engine checker plate came off a fire engine we've got all of that going down there look all of it got another bit going along there and obviously another bit going up there all fire engine now the steel that was actually a consignment of scrap steel that came in and i managed to rescue some of that and this is what we built and the sliders came from tool station they are just everyday kitchen cupboard sliders and i kid you not there is no difference between those and what is on that unit there which is a super line pro and a Halford Special. They all have the same sliding mechanisms in all of them. I, I don't see there being any difference. I know those ones should take the weight. I do have my concerns about them. We'll see where we end up. If I have to put double sliders on, then I'll have to put double sliders on. So there you go. We've got yacht varnish on top. The wood is from scaffolds, old scaffold wood, that's all it is, and it's rotten. It's not in the best of condition, but because we've bolted a the brackets on we can lift that off at any time we want and change it i have also another feature is i've made it wider this end skinnier this end because i want to be able to walk through but not only that i've made it wider that end so as i can fit those two top units over there in the corner facing this way just for convenience because i want I want that bottom one there to hold the pillar drill and when I finally get this down that is going there and the pillar drill will be bolted to that and we'll then fix that to the wall so it can't move. So with that in mind I'm going to disappear and I'm going to upload it. So thank you very much for your likes and your shares. Uh, actually I don't know if anyone has shared it but if they have thank you anyway. Thank you for subscribing. I've noticed my subscribers and subscriptions are going down a little bit. In fact I'm thinking about setting this video up and I apologise to all of those who haven't subscribed but if you want to see more videos you really do need to subscribe because I will be start locking some of these videos because my subscriptions are terrible. This channel should be way better than what it is and it isn't and I do not understand why. So this is to all the subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. Only you can see this. I'm gonna go. See you next week. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Update. Uh, next week, we're gonna do a little bit more shed work, but I'm not gonna feature it as much on the video. What I am gonna do next week is I've got to get the 240 volt system fitted into the truck properly. What I have got is I've got to get a few more plugs and sockets. I've also got some switch over switches, so I am gonna have the inverter, the shore power, the generator, and I'm sure there was something else and I can't remember what, all on one switch, all on two switches, sorry, so we can flick over and we don't have to pull sockets out and then put new sockets in, in and so forth. And that's what we've got going on next week. So we're gonna crack on with a little bit more work on the truck because I think that's uh, overdue. But in between all of that, I'm also gonna do a little bit more work in the shed. We're gonna get two walls fitted, one garage door pulled down, windows replaced with some steel, and we will start moving stuff about. Once my big bench is in the middle where I want it, we're going to readdress those sliders on the motorhome because they're just not working still. Not the way I want them to. They're just not refined enough. So with that, I'll see you next week. Thank you for, thank you, thank you for viewing. Bye.